Hey, what's going on there, folks? Welcome here to the weekend. It is the Earthmaster here with a uh, Saturday update. July 13th, 2024, about 12, 19 p.m. here, California time. Latest activity here on the globe shows a 1.7 into the uh, Big Island of Hawaii around Kilauea Volcano. Also a 4.8 here across the Java Trench. Some of the latest earthquake activity out there in the last hour. I uh, want to jump in here to Yellowstone here real quick and show a little bit of earthquake activity that ramped up overnight. Nothing big, just a handful of some smaller quakes. Uh, probably in the mid-2 range is what I'm guessing here, just looking at these seismographs. Uh, these well-defined spikes, indicative there of uh, a couple earthquakes in this area of Yellowstone. Looks like maybe three or four uh, in the mid two range, nothing being report. Well, let's see if they're reporting. It doesn't look like they're reporting anything here in the Yellowstone area. Uh, in the Montana, yes, but I wonder if that's the 2.5. That was a, about 0 0.6. So let's see here. No, it was uh, the 0 0.6 is going to be a little bit earlier. It looks like. So either way, just a little bit of small microquake activity out here uh, in the two range at Yellowstone National Park overnight. Uh, aside from that, really nothing major of concern. But uh, yeah, there's definitely some more earthquake activity occurring down in this area. This is not the earthquake activity we're seeing on the uh, seismos. Uh, but they did have an earthquake up there outside of Bozeman, Montana, 2.5, 6 o'clock this morning or so. And uh, Montana does get some earthquakes. Nothing big going on up there for now. Pacific Northwest, relatively quiet, aside from a small amount of quakes there across the uh, Cascades. Over here along the Blanco Fracture Zone, got another 3.9 earthquake. Uh, it's a fracture area of the Juan de Fuca Plate and the Pacific Plate here to the south. Yesterday seen a 3.6 as well in the same area keeping an eye on this region just due to all the elevated movement out here in this region uh, over the last couple weeks or so um, let's bring up last 30 days well we'll do 2.5 and above uh, here's all our swarming that took place up there across the uh, northern edge here of the Juan de Fuca Ridge quite a bit of earthquake activity including a 6.4 that stirred up here a couple days ago Pretty large, decent-sized earthquake. That was followed uh, by some more aftershock activity. I guess if you want to call it aftershock activity, but um, you know there was really no main quake here in this sequence. Far as starting off the swarm, it's just a swarm of earthquakes that had random magnitudes, and 6.4 happens to be the largest in that sequence of swarming. So still keeping an eye on that. I know it's been uh, somewhat quiet here today so far aside from this movement down south but we'll continue to keep an eye here on the Cascadia um, for some movement uh, Northern California for the most part limited here to the Clear Lake volcanic fields this is the hydrothermal plants that are out here taking advantage of the heated areas below to create uh, energy and you can see a lot of these earthquakes are positioned around these facilities here that create the energy. This, there's a whole process involved in uh, creating the energy. Uh, I believe that's still Calpine Hydrothermal Operations that operates down here, unless it's changed names uh, since I was down there. But uh, either way, there's uh, probably 15 or 20 of these hydrothermal plants that uh, utilize the heated area below to create energy, but also involves earthquakes kind of a form of uh, not fracturing it's a little bit different than fracturing I believe but uh, not gonna go into that right now all right the Bay Area of Northern California most of this activity here from yesterday we did see another 1.2 uh, down around the Gilroy area earlier this morning the rest of California here very spotty look at this not a whole lot going on here uh, the latest one looks like a 1.3 here outside of the Mission Ridge Fault. Extreme Southern California looks like a, a little bit below a typical day of earthquake activity. Uh, it's almost common, it's always common I should say, to see um, 
you know, any type of small microquake activity here in any given region on any given day. But this is actually a little bit quieter than uh, normal. Out and about here through the rest of the states, as you can see, most of the movement across the oil fields there of Texas and Oklahoma, out there around the New Madrid seismic zone. We got a 2.2 coming in early this morning. Nothing big there for now. And also one little earthquake out against the Blue Ridge Mountains. Beautiful area out here. I've never actually been to North Carolina or South Carolina. I want to visit this area one of these days. The Great Smoky Mountains. Goodness. I'll get out there one of these days, hopefully. 2.2 coming in early this morning around the uh, Sparta, North Carolina region. All right, so far as uh, anything major going on overnight, the largest magnitude uh, so far appears to be this 5.6 here in this Kerm in the uh, Kermadec Trench. Fairly shallow at about 10, uh, 10 kilometers deep. Uh, so no sixes up yet today. Uh, and then following that looks like uh, well, we really haven't seen too much activity there after midnight. I guess that'd be that 3.9 off the coast of Oregon so somewhat quiet today somewhat but not completely let's go ahead and pull up uh, the Hawaii map here real quick see what we have going on we're kicking up a few earthquakes here across the Kilauea volcano region mainly the summit and the upper east rift zone just waiting on uh, we're waiting on this volcano it's at a maximum level I feel in terms of inflation and we should see something uh, start happening here soon let me go check out the volcano hazards map where the volcano is still sitting at a yellow and advisory I'm gonna bring up a uh, recorded so Oop. well tilt meter is fairly level at least here in this region we'll check out the inflation chart here in a second Seismograph stations, uh, it's shown a, hand, a handful of earthquakes out here. Really nothing big. No major increasing swarm, just, um, you know, a good 15, 20 earthquakes or so in the last 20, in the last 12 hours here. And far as the inflation data goes across the general area, it's starting to come back up. Last night we've seen this little, uh, well, yesterday and last night we've seen this little downturn take place from our previous highest level of inflation right there but looks like we're starting to come back up now um, and with that you know obviously we have to watch for either some magma displacement here taking place across Kilauea volcano uh, whether it's going to be eruptive fissure vent take place or maybe just a magma intrusion off to the east rift zone somewhere we have to watch this pretty closely because we are at our highest level here observed um, since the 2018 eruption that kicked off there on the lower the uh, lower east rift zone if we could go back there another year or so you would see that but uh, there's a couple periodic eruptions there throughout time and throughout the years but look at it it's just been going up and up and up and we're now at the highest level seen uh, these are in meters which is a uh, pretty decent in terms of a rise in the land there across a volcano uh, aside from that let's see what else we got the Aleutian Trench was pretty active yesterday looks like things have calmed down slightly there in this area 4.6 from last night 3.8 uh, over here across the Kuro Kamachaka this earthquake came in immediately after the update 4.5. Nothing else brewing out here yet. Uh, and over here across the uh, Japan area, 5.3 coming in late afternoon yesterday. So really not a whole lot of newer movement here to report uh, in this area. So just looking at the globe here, most of the activity looks like we're uh, wanting to kick out, kick off down south here. There's the Java Trench clustering going on in the Indonesia Islands area. A few new earthquakes there in, in uh, Australia. Movement here across the Kermadec Trench. Got to remember this area right uh, in between the Papua New Guinea area and down here along this bend to Fiji. 
has been awfully quiet here. We really haven't seen any earthquake activity out here in the last seven days or so. We could go back the last 10 days and you guys would see that there's not a whole lot of activity roughly around this bend. I know, well, this earthquake came in yesterday, a couple fives in this region, uh, but we're still lacking decent movement here roughly around New Guinea eastward along this plate boundary. And uh, with this movement kicking up here south today, I think we're going to see some further adjustment uh, adjustment that needs to take place out here because it's been awfully quiet. And this region normally does not stay quiet for this long. Normally, when it if it does do something like this, as far as uh, being very quiet, we'll see some larger quake activity here. So watch this region closely for some movement today. The Atlantic Ocean, pretty quiet. Not a whole lot going on as far as earthquake activity up at Iceland. Let's go check it out real quick. See, see if there's anything to be concerned about right now. Not a whole lot. Nine earthquakes. Woo! Not a big deal whatsoever. But again, we're at a, uh, a level of inflation down here across the Savart Singi area comparable to what we've seen uh, just prior to the last eruption here. So keep an eye on earthquake activity. There's not a whole lot of uh, rift zone uh, earthquake activity out here recently in this region. Uh, and I think that's the key to watch for some increasing movement there across the Iceland area in terms of volcanic activity. But there's not a whole lot going on out there right now. All right, space weather activity, a little bit of C flare and M flare activity. There's an M5.3 that uh, looks like it kicked up overnight. A decent M flare. Notice the uh, image here showing that bright feature from 3738. That's that sunspot that's been quite complex here over the past few days. Been pretty quiet while it was facing Earth. Now that it's starting to uh, drift away from Earth, get out of the Earth directed view, and wants to pop off some strong flares. It's still somewhat positioned here off to the side a little bit, the western limb. Uh, and we could get maybe uh, a hit on the planet if it does produce a CME. Uh, but I don't think we've seen any CME activity here uh, from either of these flares that have popped off. Remember that we had that uh, 5.3, M5.3, and it looks like another 5-pointer in there as well. Let's pull this up. Or not 5-pointer, but an M flare. Maybe an M1.9 or so. Somewhere around there. This is the M flare category. Nothing big. But it is uh, definitely getting some unstable uh, magnetic structure with it. So we'll continue to keep an eye on this region for some stronger flaring. Again, if it's going to do it, if it's going to produce a CME, it should probably do it soon. Because you know, once it's out here on the western limb, well, we're pretty much out of the uh, the the view in terms of getting hit with that CME. And of course the CME, what does that do? It creates these solar storms here on Earth and uh, the auroras get on the elevated side. Rest of these sunspots, fairly quiet. I'm really not expecting too much from uh, either of these, any of these sunspots out here that are currently facing the Earth. Uh, overall threat, let's go back here to the site 99 percent chance for a c flare and flare at 60 x flare around 15 percent chance or so proton event has been elevated there to about 15 percent chance as well due to the uh, uh the flaring that's been taking place out here aurora forecast well maybe just maybe we'll see uh something at the higher latitude really not expecting much here uh that should have came in by now let me see here And that was from a uh, coronal hole. There's really not a whole lot of auroras coming in right, or um, yeah, the uh, aurora activity is not coming in too strong right now. Uh, that coronal hole that was facing us is gonna be up here, number 52, a couple days ago. So these coronal holes spew out some high speed solar wind stream and particles, and it looks like it actually missed us. But they were calling for potentially a, up to a G1 class storm, which would kick up the auroras, but yeah, it, it doesn't actually look like anything's going on right now. 
2100 UTC time. That's coming up here in about an hour or so. As of right now, there's nothing coming in in terms of the auroras. But we'll see what happens here. Um, Storm Prediction Center. They added an enhanced area up here across portions of Montana. Uh, Montana, North Dakota, and South Dakota here all seeing an enhanced area for, uh, I believe it's mainly for some, yeah, some wind and hail threats up there. Some big time wind and hail. A little chance for some tornado activity across these green zones, but mostly wind and some very large hail out there across those areas today. Mainly eastern Montana region. Uh, got Miles City, Rapid Valley, South Dakota. Just a heads up. Stay weather aware out there today if you happen to see these storms brewing up. Uh, out here along the west coast, California, I woke up early this morning and seen uh, quite a bit of uh, cloud cover out here. Uh, as you can see, there's uh, some monsoonal moisture pulling in here uh, to the area. We are expecting uh, some thunderstorm development up here in the Sierra Nevada mountains. And uh, there's limited moisture out here. There's not a whole lot of moisture associated with this monsoonal moisture that's coming in here, at least far as the um, convection goes. A lot of high clouds coming in. Some storms starting to pop up down here across the southern end of the state. Um, but we got a dry lightning potential here today and tomorrow. Uh, that means that we'll see some thunderstorms with very limited moisture. Some lightning strikes that may spark up some new fires out here in California. And that's not a good sign. We don't need any more big fires. Uh, it'd be awesome if there was a lot of moisture associated with this, but there's not. So we have to uh, keep our eyes open here for, for some fires. A little thunderstorm down here outside of Mammoth Lakes with one lightning strike. A little bit of rain falling with that as well. Uh, seismograph stations out here, folks, look pretty quiet. Not a whole lot going on for now. Again, uh, I, I can't really place a bet here, but I'm thinking that we'll see some further activity across the Solomon Islands, Vanuatu area, and this little seismic, seismically, it should be seismically active, but it's been kind of a, a gap zone here recently in terms of lack of seismic activity. So we'll watch this today. Got to kick back up here soon. Have a good one. We'll catch you guys back out here a little bit later on this evening. Got to fix the uh, kids' pool out here. They got a hole in it somehow, so I have to drain the water and put a little patch on it and fill it back up with some cool, fresh water so they can swim. Either way, it's still going to be hot out here with the cloud cover. Not Maybe not quite as hot, but it's kind of nice to see a little, little bit of moisture out there in the sky. Have a good one. We'll catch you guys back out here a little bit later on this evening for the Saturday night update. Stay safe, folks.